G'day mate, welcome to Oxford Included with me, Jedi. Today I want to actually cover poke shells. So poke shells, um, they're our very first aggressive creatures. Um, so first off we should really cover how they path. So we have our poke shell spawn, which being our baby spawns. They only path uh, back and forward and they can't even jump over a tile. We also have our adult versions. As you can see, these guys are quite happy to jump over two tiles and a single tile block. They'll also jump over at gaps in tiles as well without a problem. Um, very, very much the same path as, as a hatch. Um, you should be able to see the hatch video up in the top right hand corner right about now. On top of that, uh, on top of that, they cannot path over anything three tiles tall. So if you build anything, if you build a wall three tiles high, you'll stop your duplicates getting out. You'll also stop your uh, poke shells getting out. out. Poke shells are also happy to le live underwater. They will happily live under liters and liters and liters of kilos of water or petroleum. Any liquid um, there is, they're more than happy to live underneath. Now, as for their aggression, their aggression is caused by being within 33 tiles of one of their eggs. So as you can see on the far left-hand side of the screen, I have an egg. And on the far right-hand side, at 33 tiles, we're right here. If I grab one of you guys and throw you up there and grab one of you guys and throw you over there, the one on the left is going to become very, very aggressive. The one on the right is going to be perfectly fine. Um, and of course, they instantly walk in different directions. But that is on the basis that they can path there. If I pop this guy up here, as you can see, he can't path there. So if we bring up his navigation, he can't actually reach the egg. So he, he's not getting grumpy about the fact the egg's there. If I put him down a single tile so he can now path all the way over that egg, he is within the 33 tile range. So suddenly he's a, a very, very aggressive uh, pokey shell. Uh, can we deconstruct that one tile again? And uh, even if I put in a one tile gap, um, he can jump over that tile. So again, if we come back in range, come back here, come back here. <sighs> come, you come here. Uh, but if I remove it, so it's a two tile gap, so it can't jump across straight away, non-aggressive. Now, as for the pokey shells themselves, originally I set up a, um, a stable, exact same as I had for a ranch. So we have um, critter drop-off, obviously, eight of eight critters. Eight, eight critters is the maximum amount you can fit in a uh, 96 tile stable. On top of that, I put uh, the the pattern bending auto sweeper right in the middle with a conveyor loader out. So the conveyor loader is definitely set to take out any pinch row eggs because the last thing we want is one of these guys to lay an egg in this room and have all eight of them very, very upset when a duplicate comes in to groom them. So that is a very, very important part of this actual build. On top of that, we're also shipping out uh, their molts and uh, any sand they actually produce. On top of that, um, I actually have polluted dirt being fed into uh, this storage container. Now, as you can see, the storage container has 1,999.95 kilograms of polluted dirt. But the problem is it's off gassing. So as my auto sweeper fills it up, instantly it's continuously off gassing, causing that auto sweeper to run all the time. So honestly, if you're gonna set up a, a stable like this, um, rather than having a conveyor receptacle or even a pile of polluted dirt on the floor that we're then putting into a critter feeder, honestly, I would change this. I'd remove the critter feeder. I would remove the, um, the conveyor uh receptacle and i just put in a plain simple conveyor sheet because these guys are going to be more than happy to eat their polluted dirt off the ground um in saying that i was really really struggling with why are we domesticating these guys um sure if we domesticate them they're uh do i have a tame one and now i have a tame one so as you can see um their reproduction goes up by 17 per site well 17 per cycle, base re reproduction of 2 per cycle, with an extra 15% when they're actually tamed. Um, so, once you tame one set, you can use that to either seed a second colony, or you can just throw all your wild ones in here. So, what I've actually set up here is I've set up sort of a, a special way of... Um, special way of keeping all my poke shells together, along with, at the same time... Um, really making them duplicate maintenance free. So, come on, fall. There we go. So what I've actually done is I've got an incubation room and that could be for any poke shell you find any, anywhere over the map or when this one hits it, its maximum eight um, excess pokey shells that 
haven't been shipped out because maybe there's something wrong with your auto sweeper system or I don't know, um, can be automatically shipped out of the system. So what actually happens is they come down here. Now this is designed to, keep, uh, to collect all poke shells, only the poke shells, and bring them down into this room. So Sticky's gonna wrangle up this guy. Come on, Stinky. You can do it. Friday night. Now. Um, bring them down to this critter drop-off. Now, as you can see... Oh, Gossman's going to come do it. Okay. Gossman's going to release them into this room. And this room has a little bit of automation in it to make sure that the poke shells get from up here to down here as easily as possible. Well, with as little duplicate management as possible. So, when he decides to path... Come on. Um... As you can see, we open the two doors underneath him. We close this door so he can't run backwards. We also lock this door across his head to knock him off balance to make him fall through the floor. Now, the way I've actually done that is with just a touch of automation. I have a critter sensor up here set to zero critters. Uh, if we go to our room overlay, it's just checking this little U-shaped room. That's all it's actually checking. It's checking to see if there are any critters that have left this critter drop-off, wandered through this door into this small, tiny little room. Once it detects that there is a critter in that room, it sends a red signal. Uh, it sends a green signal. So let's get one of these guys and shove him back up here so we can actually see the automation in progress. Uh, sends a green signal to open these two doors. Same time, it using a not gate. So there's a not gate to swip, uh, switch the automation from green to red. Um, we'll actually close this door and as they close the door across his head to knock him off balance. He's going to then come down and join the rest of the pokey shells I have down in this little room. Um, I have an auto sweeper down here to pick up any sand that these guys drop. Also any eggs because I really don't want mean little pokey shells down here no matter what. Um, and we're shipping the eggs on this um, actual... Uh, conveyor rail at the same time i'm also shipping off their malts so if any of these guys actually get old enough that they die down here their malts will automatically be shipped out because the po uh, the duplicates can't actually get into this room uh over here i have allow manual use turned on you could just use an auto sweeper all depends on how you set up your base to ship any polluted dirt in here through a conveyor chute and drop it straight on the floor to contain the polluted oxygen uh not the right overlay Definitely the right overlay. So to contain the polluted oxygen, I have a, ox a deodorizer up here. So under our oxygen chat tab, we have a deodorizer, which uses sand to filter polluted oxygen from the air, reducing the disease spread. So if we do, do get any germs down in this room, I have one here at the door, which the duplicates will have to manage. At the same time, I also have one in this room where the duplicates can't actually reach it. Um, because I have an auto sweeper here and I have poke shell down here producing sand, the auto sweeper can add sand to the deodorizer as it requires. And at the same time, when it uh, fills up and actually outputs clay instead, I have this conveyor loader shipping out the clay along with any sand and also possibly your poke shell malt, all depending on which direction you want to send them, um, out this loader. So as you can see on our conveyor loader, we're shipping out sand through this route and it's going to wherever it needs to go. On top of that, I have our incubation chamber. So with our eggs being shipped up here, they're coming into a conveyor chute and being dropped straight on the ground because if they're in any sort of storage, they will not incubate. Um, I have an auto sweeper here that can reach, reach all our different incubators. Um, but the biggest problem we have with an incubator is they actually consume a lot of power. It's 240 watts continuously whilst they're running. So you have two options. You can do just pop them on the ground and leave them unpowered. That works perfectly fine. It gets them up off the floor and popped away. So hopefully you don't end up with any grumpy pincher, uh, pincher, uh, pokey shells. Second option you actually have is, um, you have, you can put a power shutoff on the actual power line, which is what I've actually done here. So I have a power line here with a, uh, a power shutoff hooked up to a clock sensor. So during this green part of the day, and if we just switch, swap this around uh, and speed up time a little bit, we'll power up these for a short period of the day. And what I actually want to see is I want to see the duplicates come here and currently every one of them has an incubation of 5%. Now 5% is normally what they have, but if a duplicate comes in here and, and sings them a lullaby, which Grossman's about to do, and hopefully Sticky's about to do as well, um, we can see this egg is going to go from 5%. It's going to get a 20% bonus by just being lullaby. 
Now Ziva going to do one as well. So we've gone from 5% IE hashing in, in 20 cycles down to uh, up to 25% hashing in now just uh, 4 cycles. And then this power shutoff is going to turn off at a certain period of time. Uh, period of the day. I've actually got this set to 15%. Normally I set it down to like 5% because you just want the Ghibli to come in here once once a day and, and normally only incubate and uh, normally only lullaby one egg um, because normally you only have maybe one egg added per day. All depends on how many wild critters you get down here. Uh, once they're all grown up we will spawn up dump a poke shell in here um, as it because I got that critter drop off it is set to only keep the spawns not the actual pokey shell and set a uh, max of zero critters will actually take that pokey shell and bring it down here because this is the only place it can go to be added to the rest of the system to have as many poke shells in one room as possible now in my room overlay I have 25 critters in this room currently which means they're all over guarded and they're all glum what does that actually mean in real world world terms it means so you're tame so you're actually gonna eat almost nothing basically almost nothing that's really what it comes down to they consume a whole lot less materials per cycle which means you can fit more of them in the same room on the same limited amount of food that you're actually feeding them um, obviously I am I am using a fair bit of food up here um, with my eight tame ones but all the wild ones down here honestly oh all the overcrowded glum ones down here is probably more accurate um, they're only gonna have what 20 per cycle their reproduction is still gonna keep going up it is gonna go up at two two percent per cycle which means in their 100 life cycle well 95 life cycle because they spend five cycles as a baby so during their 95 life uh, 95 cycle life they are going to still produce one egg which is enough to maintain this population and we're using this population up here to boost this population down here um i haven't worked out the total amount of you know total numbers that you can have down here but realistically, as long as you keep feeding them, they're going to keep producing and you're going to have plenty and plenty of malt, which then you can come up here and turn into poke shell, shell malt. Um, so from the baby one growing up to a full-blown adult will give you five kilos of lime. And on top of that, taking an adult uh, poke shell malt and converting that into lime will give you 10 kilos. You've got to remember your fossil down here. It takes you 100 kilos of fossil to get 5 kilos of lime. So the poke shells are actually a very, very effective way to make a bunch of lime for steel. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, if you learned something uh, or enjoyed the video, click the like button, share it with your friends, tell your friends about this. At the same time, if you're looking forward to more videos like this, click the subscribe button because I am doing Oxnot included tutorials every day, every other day. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.